A peer-reviewed team from the Pacific Island Forum was on the island to assess the ways that Forum Island countries have utilised assistance from development partners as well as their own resources and aid received to guarantee better life for their people and progress in achieving national priorities. Niue is the first country in the region to undertake the peer review under the Cairns Compact on Strengthening Development Coordination in the Pacific that was endorsed by the forum leaders in 2009. An invitation was extended for representatives of the Samoan and Nauruan governments to represent the forum island countries on the team and a representative of AusAid to represent the development partners. During the one week of consultations, the new peer review team have met with representatives from various government departments, the acting premier and cabinet, the private sector, non-government organisation representatives, as well as the New Zealand High Commissioner in Niue. In a session with the Chamber of Commerce, the government was commended for the recognition of the private sector in the country and including the Chamber of Commerce in the peer review. The Chamber of Commerce also highlighted the urgent need for the establishment of an aid coordination unit within the appropriate government departments to ensure that the Chamber does not miss out on any assistance intended for the private sector. The new peer review team is expected to present preliminary recommendations to the government of Niue in a briefing session tomorrow morning before they leave the island. A peer review report with recommended actions to strengthening development coordination in Niue will be agreed with the government within six weeks of completing the in-country visit. The World Health Organization has alerted member countries of an enterohemorrhagic E. coli outbreak and infections in Germany with 10 countries that have now reported cases. Nine patients in Germany have died of HUS and six of EHEC. One person in Sweden has also died with many hospitalized patients requiring intensive care including dialysis. The source of the outbreak remains unknown. Health authorities showed that patients affected by the current EHEC outbreak consumed raw tomatoes, cucumbers and lettuce significantly more often compared to the healthy controls. Further microbiological analysis of food and extensive traceback investigation of food sources identified by patients continue. This morning, motorists may have realised a change at the fuel bowsers as the bulk fuel announced yet another fuel price hike. As of today, the price of petrol rises by 12 cents from $2.56 to $2.68 per litre and diesel was up by 17 cents from $2.66 to $2.83. This increase comes with the arrival of the cargo ship that has been delayed and was a voyage behind and despite the fuel prices it seems that some are not faced with this latest move as more motor vehicles arrive on the cargo vessel each voyage. Locals are left to wonder whether they will be dealt a reprieve as fuel prices almost reach $3 a litre. Community participation is the focus of a two-day training workshop organised by the Integrated Water Resource Management Project that started today. The training workshop targets water quality and improving water supply and measures to counteract losses to the system due to water leakages. We caught up with the water division as they were carrying out the training sessions today. The training today was uh, initially for Luffy North and Luffy South. And given they are the demonstration, they was for the Island Grand Project. But uh, there was some thought that uh, maybe involved some of the other villages and, and it turned out to be pretty good uh, because the, the issues are common. And, and the issues that uh, with leakages has been identified in the individual village plans for, for the two Alufis. Uh, so this is part of that plan that, uh, that uh, we're working on. And, and it's also part of our normal uh, operation in terms of our water supply division. So, as always, um, we can only provide uh, a service uh, in accordance with what we, we have in our budget. Um, you know, we wish we can uh, we can help everyone out. 
Uh, but the, I think the major problem for us at the moment is um, the household legal repairs. Uh, we're still responsible for, for doing most of that. Um, so that's part of this community training program involving the private sector plumbers so that uh, we'll come up with a better solution to, to fixing uh, leaking taps and uh, household fixtures. How much does it actually take uh, in terms of uh, money spent to get water to, to the whole island and how much is lost in terms of uh, the leakages that we're experiencing? Um, an analysis was done, in, was done in 2007 by uh, SOPAC. Um, uh, at that time, um, our power consumption was uh, up in $160,000 uh, per year, just, just to pump the water. That's not taking into account our operating costs, you know, salaries and maintenance and motor vehicle costs. It was just simply $150,000 to $160,000 purely on power. We've got that down to $120,000. So, so those are the things that uh, are real tangible for us and we can make a big difference in, in our operation. Um, but uh, we've still got a lot uh, of areas to do and part of the intention of today's workshop is to develop a water use efficiency plan which we will then um, not only address leaks but we will look at how our system performs, uh, just how efficient our system is in terms of pumping, our, our reservoirs and how each person uses a litre of water at their home. The two demonstration villages of Alufi North and Alufi South have highlighted some common problems and lessons learned will enable the division to implement certain aspects that may be duplicated for other villages to follow suit. Clinton says the general feedback from village representatives is that they are happy with most of the services, but the water division also acknowledges that there is still a lot of work to be done and to be improved. In trying to deal with the common problems, the division is taking on board an integrated approach, pulling in resources from other projects with similar objectives to improve water supply to households. But there are, uh, for instance, there's the EU cable replacement project. Uh, we are also getting some assistance from them uh, in procurement of pipeline, uh, valving, um, so that we can improve the efficient operation of our system, not only in terms of uh, provision of service, but especially maintaining water quality, uh, and that's part of the training tomorrow. Uh, the other project involved also uh, the uh, sustainable land management. Uh, I think the agriculture is running that project, um, and that's why the integrated approach has been done through these uh, either brand programs, so that we pick up all those uh, other programs that are happening now and in the future, so that we don't uh, replicate all our efforts. Our mission statement is basically provide safe, reliable water to, to everybody, 24-7. Um, and I think we're hitting the mark at about 90% of the time. There are times when it's unavoidable, when some of our assets break down, so then it takes a while to fix it, and we must apologise for that. It takes, by the time we go around to notifying people, it's better for us to go and fix the problem. So, um, and the communication side, uh, there are, you know, we could improve, um, and we're working hard at it. And it's not going to change over you know, a few days or a few months. So Rome wasn't built in a day, so we're working. I think we're making good progress as we go along. So. Tomorrow's session will focus on water quality, but the hope is that this will create a better understanding amongst the community of the systems and the challenges faced by the division. Now into its seventh year, the Pacific Music Awards has grown from strength to strength, celebrating the achievements of Pacific musicians. At the end of May, the Polynesian Blue Pacific Music Awards was held last weekend. As New Zealand Music Month drew to a close, with the big winner of the night, Nation Mystic, winning three out of the four categories they were nominated for. The Niuean community can also take pride in the achievements of the Mutalo Ululota Matehefunua Trust Choir for their album Lolongo Tapu Tokio from Dalo Niue Taufilolongo Fa, taking out the award for the best gospel album, taking the traditional gospel music to another level and finally being recognized. On the 1st of June each year, Samoans worldwide celebrate Samoans gaining independence and this year marks 49 years of sovereignty as a nation. Yesterday, new Samoan community came together to honour those who have paved the way forward and pride in being the first island nation to seek independence. 
For many, it was a day to reflect on the many freedoms they now enjoy, especially living away from their native homeland. A community celebration was held at the Niwe Girlfriend Sports Club yesterday afternoon and was enjoyed by all who attended. The Niwe Youth Council has a newly elected management for the next three years. In a meeting held on Monday, youth leaders from affiliated groups voted for the new management committee. The all-female committee has Shield Palahitungia at the helm as chairperson, supported by Vice Chairperson Kalavatangaloa Morrissey. At Diana Puihang as the new secretary, Norma Palana remains as the treasurer, and an increased number of committee members was Adora Misikea, Numa Sianiholo, Alicia Talafasi and Meleta Tupo. The new committee brings a fresh new outlook and look forward to a productive three years working to raise youth profile on the island and development on the island. The Kirikiki season will be drawing to a close this coming weekend with four teams set to hit the pitch one last time for this year. Following some discussions held with the committees and leaders this week, it is confirmed that the winners in Pool A, Tuapa, and Pool B, Tamgotonga, will face off to see who will get the title and overall bragging rights for 2011. Runners-up in both pools, Makefu and Mutalo, will have to settle for who will place in third and fourth placings. Whatever the outcome, the new Kikiki Committee is hoping for an even tougher competition next year. Those are our news stories that we have for you this evening. We do hope that you enjoy your, the weekend ahead. And don't forget to check out the finals for the cricket season happening this weekend, as well as Queen's Birthday celebrations on Monday, which is a public holiday. Go and check out the Uluvehi Marine Day, as well as the Rally of the Rock. All the best to those who will be competing.